So yeah, uh, I will just make a very brief introduction uh, since we are few. Uh, into uh, this Syria, we we launched this Syria uh, of the new school for new city uh, as a Syria of uh, events uh, that are demonstrating different transformative practices. Uh, uh, conducted by green, green left or progressive governments, uh, city governments across Europe. And in the last uh, three days, we have, so to say, visited uh, seven cities uh, and we explored some of the uh, transformative practices and policies which are implemented in the cities. Uh, mainly in the field of sustainability, but also in relation to tackling social inequalities uh, or quality of life. And uh, we are doing this as a broader part of the broader program that is focused on empowerment of citizens and also volunteers and other activists that are supporting uh, the uh, progressive orientation of Zagreb. Uh, and we are happy that we can welcome you, Philip, to join us with your lecture and presentation on housing policies in Zurich uh, uh, to also uh, be able to discuss some of these aspects you will show and also for uh, audience, uh, which is also be uh, available later as a recording to uh, follow the developments related to housing policies in Zurich uh, and to have it as a foundation for further discussion and even policy development, hopefully in Zagreb. So without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to you and once again, thank you for your time and effort to join. Yeah, thank you, Ved Vedran. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I was happy to be invited and uh, contribute, talk a bit about our housing issues, our housing policies in Zurich. And uh, my background is uh, I'm a urban geographer or social and economic geographer. I'm the secretary of the International Network for Urban Research and Action, and I run the INURA Zurich Institute, as well as I'm president of the housing cooperative Kraftwerk One, and that's actually where I am right now. So I start uh, introducing a bit of Zurich. You see a picture I took some days ago from one of our hills. You see the lake, then you can always uh, discover where we are or, or uh, recognize where we are. We have that uh, one green tower. This is the highest building in Zurich. It's an office building. It's a central business district kind of building with uh, many banks inside. We, on former industrial land. In the background, you see the Alps. So for those, mm, I just made uh, also geographical introduction. Maybe not everybody knows exactly where Zurich is. You see here on the map, you see Zagreb, the Alps, and Swit Zurich that is a bit in the north of our country, Switzerland. And if we fly in more, you can see here the main part of the city in this basin. There is again the lake, but also the parts on the other side of the these hills uh, belong to Zurich. You see even the airport that is very close to the city center. It's 10 minutes by train only. Luckily now there is not so much uh, traffic in the air. Uh, an aerial view of Zurich, again, the Lake of Zurich, you see the confines of the city and then the bordering Mm, municipalities, they are like agglomeration and belong to the same canton but not to the municipality of Zurich and are not that progressive as the city of Zurich that is left green 
in the government and also left green major majority in the parliament since 2019. Since you were here, Vedran. And what we, yes. <laughs> what we talk about today here is this purple uh, color that uh, all, all these fields are housing that are or municipal or cooperative or charity. So this is uh, our main topic uh, tonight. I make a short overview about the public housing in Zurich. I talk about growth. Zurich is growing. Uh, then we come to the housing policies. How does it work? What are the aims of the municipality? We have to talk about our system here that is mainly rental and not so much about ownership. That's a difference to many places. And we talk about urban development, gentrification, and then I also have to talk about the cooperatives that are very important in the city of Zurich. So the first public housing project was this one. It's in my neighborhood in the District 5. Uh, it provided um, cheap housing. The situation was very bad that time, 1907. People couldn't find uh, places where they can live, uh, also for a reasonable price. It was a, a real uh, disaster. So the municipality decided then to construct this buildings. That This was the start after a long political fight, of course. Then more and more projects were added. This is also quite a big uh, project called Schindel, Schindelhäuser. It's like tiles uh, from the 1920s. They are, people really love to live there. It's very beautiful and it gets renovated again and again but never uh, it was never torn down it's actually also listed in the cultural heritage of the city and the canton then we had more uh, public housing 30s 40s 50s but mainly also cooperative developments then in the 1960s this building was constructed, which was very new because it was a for Zurich it was a high rise those times with uh, something like 21 floors, 62 meters high, and uh, really many people uh, could be uh, provided with modern standard uh, housing. This is a uh, an aerial view, view, a journalist, a photographer took it uh, the last winter. And you see for orientation here is the lake and the inner city is over here, the, or the old town, uh, the, the historical old town. And we see more housing here that are a mix, a mix of uh, cooperative housing, some more public housing and private housing. So in many places you find, find mixes. It's not a uh, super concentrated. Some places are more concentrated, but in general, we don't have a enormous concentration of these projects, be it public housing, be it cooperative housing. Then we have an example from the 1970s. Uh, these four towers were constructed then. They were for a long time the highest buildings of Switzerland and also they wanted to represent something that the municipality is able to provide housing so you can see from far and the process is ongoing here you have an example uh, from right uh, it, uh, people just moved in two years ago so it's a project from the 2010s it's very close to the lake the land could be taken over uh, by the city for a reasonable price because otherwise it's not possible to 
provide housing that people can also pay. Uh, this neighborhood is a highly, 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 I must say, gentrified um, neighborhood. Uh, all high income people and uh, people that are wealthy want to live there. Of course, it's because the lake is so uh, close and on the same time, it's quite central. You have train station here and uh, you have trams and uh, uh, expressway and so on. So the city decided to have also public housing in a neighborhood that is already very highly gentrified for 20 years now. And also in the future, this is uh, 500 meters from where I am now. It's down the river and uh, also a big project that people voted for in the referendum uh, two years ago. And right now they, it's under construction and it will provide maybe 300 flats or room for almost 1,000 people. Then, if we look at the figures, the city of Zurich, you see we have a population just of the city of Zurich. It's uh, growing and nowadays it's 435,000 inhabitants. The metropolitan region has about 1.2 million inhabitants, but has no no formal um, political border. If we look at the numbers of the apartments for these 435,000 people, we have a total of 220,000 apartments. That's 100%. Out of them, 200,000 are for rent. The so people here rent 90% of the apartments are for rent and 10% are for buy to own like ownership uh, apartments. So this is important to know in the game or in the policies of the city and of the also of the politics we try to bring to the better. Uh, public housing are 10,000 units, which is 5% of all apartments and uh, cooperative housing are for about 40,000, which is 18% of all apartments and 20% of the rented. And all the cooperatives ha uh, have rented apartments for rent. If we look again at the map, we see here, it looks a bit messy, but you see green, the housing cooperatives, and you see they are spread. There are some hotspots like here at the hill, hillside uh, in this neighborhood, which is maybe the poorest neighborhood. We have almost 40% of all housing that are cooperative housing, but also public housing, this kind of purple uh, marks you see. And so the cooperatives are actually the majority of the not-for-profit housing in Zurich. Uh, okay, where were we now? So these are the figures. So it's uh, not a small city, it's not a big city, it's an in-between city, but it's not, for sure not a small town. Then uh, here we were before um, with the overview of all the cooperative and public housing. And here I stole from the department of the mayor some slides. Uh, and you see a similar um, overview. They start, of course, with the apartments owned by the city, which are 10,000 units, apartment of municipal foundations that are 4,000 units. Foundations are like uh, for uh, students or a foundation for um, families with uh, three or more kids. These are all kind of foundations or for uh, elderly people. 
We have foundations with their apartments uh, providing for uh, uh, elderly people. Then the city, and this is already part of the policy, so they don't go, they construct themselves and they provide housing. As we saw, it's about five percent with the municipal foundations a little bit more, but they also support non-profit cooperatives, housing cooperatives. Um, they don't support 40,000 units. They don't promote all the cooperatives because some cooperatives like don't like to take money from the city because then they have to fulfill their uh, their conditions. Like there's a special framework you have to fulfill then, and some don't like that at all. But in general, you see how, how this works. Uh, you have a delivery of city-owned land, for instance. That's maybe 20% of all the cooperatives. You have a lease, uh, you get, get a lease, uh, the land from the city and you pay every year some 100,000 francs or euros and, uh, and can use it for 60 or 80 years. And then it has to be renewed, that contract. Also the city invests in cooperatives, but without the return on investment. The return on investment is not monetary, but cooperatives help to fulfill the aims and targets of the housing policy. So there is a collaboration and the city has special funds to support cooperatives with uh, zero interest rate or almost zero interest rate, it depends but for very under very good conditions the money is really cheap that you can build and run the cooperative yeah the city always has uh, a representative in the cooperative boards in all those cooperative boards that have a land lease or money from the city so uh, here it says the, about the loans subordinate low interest or no interest fees. And then also they pay housing su subsidies. Also the Canton of Zurich does for low income people, very low income, and these are about 6,500 units. So they are not no, only uh, less expensive than market prices, but they are also subsidized I have uh, extra extra money in that uh, in those apartments for people with very low income. So it's important to mention here we talk about first public housing. We talk about cooperative housing, which is a private enterprise. If you want to, yeah, you can say. Uh, cooperatives are private. Then we have some charities, people that have money in a charity. So, but to get all together, we talk about not for profit housing. So, municipal housing or public housing, cooperative housing, charities, they are not for profit. And we do not talk about social housing. Only what I just said before about this 6,500 on the previous slide. This is a different model. We do not have in Zurich, in that sense, social housing. We don't talk about social housing like in other countries, be it in France or Germany or other countries. And also it's not the same as affordable housing because affordable never says what, how much is the price to be affordable. It, affordable it is when you have enough money to pay can be a very high price rent and people can afford that have a very good income or are very well off in their lives. Here you see 
a graph rent or own home ownership in percent of population. You see Switzerland at the very end. There's also our bourgeois uh, newspaper, New Neue Zürich Zeitung. They say, ah, we are at the very end in Switzerland with uh, uh, housing ownership. But actually, this is really uh, not a question of good or bad. We think mainly it's a good thing to have house ownership. It's more stable. Uh, sorry, to have rental housing system. It's more stable and it's a bit more just. If you have a good, uh, you, you need a good uh, tenant's law, though. You need a good tenant's law. And ours is okay and needs to be also improved. But if you have a bad tenant's law, then rental is not the best solution, of course. So Switzerland at the end and uh, other countries. And if you look here, the quality of life ranking, you see Vienna that has a very progressive um, housing system with uh, a lot of regulation, very regulated. Munich also quite advanced in, uh, in the housing realm. Also a lot of rental, Vienna rental, Geneva rental, Zurich rental, Basel rental, Copenhagen mixed, but also many rental and many cooperatives, same in Vancouver. So you see, interesting enough, the quality of life somehow clearly correlates with the rental housing system. And uh, that has many backgrounds. The one is also that you do not depend directly on the banks. Of course, the cooperatives depend on the banks, but not only, they get also very good conditions from the public sector, which is well invested money. Housing policy and one third target until 2050. In 2010 or 11, we had a referendum that asked for say, um, saying one third of all rental housing needs to be not for profit housing. One third. Now we are about uh, one quarter, 25% are not for profit housing. Uh, apartments and the target is now until 2050, one third and 76% of the population voted for that new, um, it's not a law, it's in the constitution of the city of Zurich since 2011. So the housing policy or the general uh, uh, policy also with the uh, social like uh, or, or, or sustainable background is to have a social mix in all districts, uh, maintaining affordable apartments and business premises. I don't know why they have that in here. The creation of ecologically exemplary affordable apartments and business premises, apartments in particular for families, and older people. So this is a caring aspect, provide um, housing for families and older people. Then definitely uh, a consequence of that new uh, target of one third non-profit housing, the increase in the proportion of apartments owned by not-for-profit housing organizations up to one third. And then also promotion of subsidized apartments for lower incomes. This is definitely a target for the city until 2050. Zurich is on the constant um, pressure. It's as it is so attractive, people want to move here. After the agreements with the EU, we had a huge influx in the first decade of this century. And as you can see, the number of inhabitants increased from about 370,000 in the year 2005 to now we are at 235 and it's expected to go up to 420 or even 520,000 
which means uh, a lot of construction is needed and puts the city under pressure. It's also the canton that wants that because it's not allowed to build uh, in new uh, zoning or on green fields in the whole of the canton. So, or it, it was already in, so, in uh, construction zones or then it's uh, zones that should be recycled or converted from industrial or from the railway to housing. We have a look here from the silo. You recognize this green tower, the public housing here, the other public housing from the 60s here. And this used to be industrial uh, land for a very long time. It's an incinerator here. And you see all these new built gentrified um, housing blocks. For instance, this is um, uh, 80 meters high and one square meter is around 20,000 euros. So if you buy a flat here, it's for 100 square meters, you pay at least 2 million Swiss francs or euros. And so this converted a lot on the other side of this old uh, train viaduct from 1860, 150 years old or more, you find the old working class neighborhood. Also, this is a cooperative, and this is a cooperative. And if we look a bit more to the left, we see this picture. You see again the train tracks, and here is the first, very first public housing uh, project, and then again many uh, cooperatives, cooperative, cooperative, different cooperatives. There are about 132 co different cooperatives in the city of Zurich. And another new build gentrification you find here. Here's the main station. And this is a result of the attractiveness of Zurich. So for a very long time, there was a fight about this uh, railway land and the uh, public transport, SPB, Schweizerische Bundesbahn, somehow won the fight and could build this very dense, more or less high rise, very super expensive, um, let's call it uh, project. I mean, it's kind of a neighborhood. What you find there is thousands of square meters for employees of Google or several Swiss banks that uh, settled here. But what is now growing is the uh, high tech, the social media tech, the Amazon and, and, and they come uh, to Zurich because of attractive um, uh, conditions, high quality of life and so on. And of course they pay uh, enormous wages. And like this uh, working class neighborhood is under constant pressure because the rents really rise. So this is a, um, an area of District 5 that is uh, really gent more and more gentrified. If we talk about urban development and zoning planning, you see here, this is the city of Zurich, it says uh, with the new BZO, Zonenordnung, so the new zoning law, there is a potential to uh, build higher and dense, more dense. And these are all these yellow places. They are, uh, they have a potential of partly up to 80% on the small pieces of land. And with the time, this means nothing else than here in the poorest neighborhood, Schwammendingen, on the other side of the hill towards the airport. You see, they, there was a, a cooperative housing. They will renew their buildings. You see private owners here. I don't know whether you have that also in Croatia, this uh, post to show how high the 
or the volume uh, the volume of the future building here is also a good example what densification means you see the former little buildings and now a new on this maybe at the same surface but a uh, lot uh, uh, much more uh, people live there or mainly they have more surface actually same here see the left at the right side so Zurich is now under a constant uh, change same here again this will be houses uh, completely different and this neighborhood used to have 7003 I just read the number recently and it's down now to 5000 and there need to be major efforts about because of the city climate the, and the global warming it's not good to tear down so many um, trees on the same time it's important to have housing provision especially when it's not for profit and we go back to this map and you see the uh, the progress that was made how many units were built and you see these are the housing cooperatives these green ones they construct more and more but the private sector is also is also very active and thus the target of 30 percent gets more and more difficult so blue public uh, this uh, green uh, cooperatives and here the private sector uh, like uh, institutions banks or pension funds and so on and here the private persons they are uh, a little so almost constant and also the the share of owned housing housing in ownership is also slightly growing increasing so now i want to it's already 10 to 7 i want to uh, going go shortly through the housing cops the third way as we call it it's a, a mix of ownership and tenancy you see here the number one is house ownership private or companies or societies associations and so on companies that uh, own the house and then maybe rent it out or uh, sell it in uh, in um, ownership and then we have the tenancy people are tenants or they rent from owners or from public housing or private housing or from companies and the third way are the housing cooperatives it's a collective ownership so you rent a flat from the cooperative but on the same time you uh, pay a share and you also own the cooperative this is the uh, specific system how it works here and it can be on private land or public land if it's on the cooperative is on public land as i said before then you have a lease you lease it from the municipality for 60 or 80 years sometimes the contracts are also 100 years and for example this is one of the young cooperatives uh, these buildings uh, are here for 20 years i'm actually exactly here now <laughs> in this office and it has about uh, 100 apartments 250 people live here 100 people work in this building and also in the what do you see here restaurant and uh, small shops uh, hair, hair, hairdresser and so on and uh, this is from the other side seen this is the main the main part where people uh, live in apartments in all kinds of apartments we have a restaurant we 
We don't want only the apartments, we want also a bit uh, an infrastructure that makes, uh, that rises the quality of life. We have a little shop that we run ourselves. And just to show quickly how we are organized, you see uh, the Cooperative Craft Work One founded in 1995. It has actually, meanwhile, 2,200 members. It's growing because the request for housing is the demand is so high. People uh, want to become members in order they once maybe get an apartment. Uh, we have a full assembly happening once a year with the elections to the board. So it's a little uh, like a state in the state with a, a democratic um, system with elections. Uh, you can vote on the budget, on pro projects, like in a municipality. Then the board has seven members, but we have also professional office with employed staff, uh, people, uh, bookkeeper, uh, specialists for communication, then also for social uh, affairs so sh and uh, participation and for the management and so on and so on and so on. The problem I mentioned, this is uh, like a brother or sister cooperative, the cooperative uh, Kalkbreite is also a wonderful project. It's on the top of a, a tram garage. The trams go in to sleep here. And, uh, the thing is, it was also a long fight to get this project uh, done because this was uh, public land. It still is public land, but it, it already was used as a, a tram, but it was open, open field to uh, have the tram sitting there. And the project group started it. And now it's there for, since 2014. So what I want to say here, is the problem we have is finding land and to compete with private owners and especially pension funds and others seeking for investment in the urban fabric uh, to have stable and safe uh, money invested in housing. So the uh, competition is very hard and to keep rents low in our apartments is difficult if we have to pay too much for the land. So this is a, yeah, a very a, a big challenge. It's also for the municipality a challenge to, for their own projects. And last thing I want to show you is in preparation, our next project of our, of my um, cooperative, the Kraftwerk One Pro, uh, Cooperative. Uh, we are planning now 125 apartments. We have a social aspect at 25% for the foundation families with three and more children. We have 20% surface for shops, restaurants, ateliers, culture, shared space. We will have a circus in here. You see one of the wagons uh, illustrated here. And we try to move in in 2026. It is a very, very lovable project but uh, needs some time still. It's on public land. It's on public land. We will pay a lease. Conclusions. So with the cooperatives we have the third way in the housing sector, rent and um, ownership on the same time. So ownership means you have a say in the assembly or you can involve, be involved in the board or and so on. Uh, the not-for-profit housing brings a lot of economic stability because um, a quite significant number of uh, people in the city, inhabitants, they have rents that they don't need to work only for the rents. So because the rents are lower compared to the, um, the private market. This brings uh, quite a good stability, also in the biographies of the people, of course. So they have nice living in great uh, projects, mostly or more and more, and uh, economic stability. Innovation also for the whole um, sustainable development uh, um, 
recommendations. Uh, I mean, we also have a lot of ecological uh, contributions. Uh, we try to plant as many trees. We do recycling. We have uh, photovoltaic. We and 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 and. So oh, we have a lot of social responsibility. We care for each other, even financially. There is a com community building part also, having shared rooms, uh, shared uh, tasks. All together, it has a lot of quality of life. And yeah, we like to cooperate. And this is a picture from 2019 in the crochet project when we talked with some uh, cooperative specialists, mainly these three, here with all our nice guests from Zagreb and other Croatian cities. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Philip. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, this wonderful presentation. I have a few questions, but I would also like to open the floor for any other questions or comments. Okay, maybe just to kick off the discussion, uh, my question goes into direction you've mentioned that uh, there is a person from city which sits in the board of cooperative in some cases where where city is providing uh, land, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah, I I wonder if you can briefly describe how this how this uh, relationship has developed uh, 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 since it was established as a practice and uh, and is it you know is it i'm just wondering is it like running smoothly is it more formality or is it also that uh, in the decision making process uh, uh, to which extent city ha can influence decisions? Yes. Uh, and if they are in minority, probably, uh, you, what is their status in the board uh, of cooperative? Yeah. Okay. So these um, deputy, uh, these deputies or uh, these members from the city, there is only one out of seven or nine. Every cooperative is a bit different. It's a very old tradition. It started uh, maybe also as a control. I mean, these cooperatives started and all of a sudden had a lot of money and maybe didn't know how to manage. It was kind of uh, maybe also meant as a support. Uh, meanwhile, it has a tradition. The experiences I have is um, this delegate uh, is already for 20 years uh, he's not elected he's not elected by the members of the cooperative but um, he's an employee of the city and there were actually i would say never frictions i mean he he's also in the in our case in the uh, board to support actually to support the managing or the, the the strategic the strategic process in managing the cooperative it's a it's a good cooperation i must say mm -hmm. and maybe just to explain uh, a bit uh, let's say that the last example of the new project uh, you mentioned where 2026 uh, will be uh, date of use you said that the city has provided land. Mm -hmm. I wonder, uh, on the example of this project, how do you, uh, uh, what, what is the investment uh, mix uh, in the terms of uh, is cooperative uh, and cooperative members are the only uh, investors or there is a mix of private and civic investment? What is the just to take this as an example, uh, where do investments come from if city is providing land? Right. So uh, the city is providing the land. We have to pay them this 
kind of lease the, um, from mm -hmm. when we inhabit it. So from 2026, we will pay them, I don't know, maybe 200,000 francs a year, something like that. Uh, the, the other money comes from a mix of institutions mainly. So it's like our state bank, the Cantonal Bank, Zurich Cantonal, uh, Cantonal Bank will be in our case the major part. But we want to always have a mix uh, also for sustainable sustainability reason to be a bit safer, not to depend only on one institution. So we get money also from a federal institution and then from the private alternative bank, Switzerland, that uh, mm -hmm. invests only in sustainable development projects. So it's a, a green social bank. And then we have two or three other institutions that will help us to finance it. But mm -hmm. for them is, I mean, help for them. It's also a business, even for the cantonal bank, it is a business. I mean, they get a return on investment that will be, uh, when people move in, they pay a rent and a part of it will be to finance the, the money that was uh, invested. And the equity, the people, the shares uh, people bring in is we try, we always try to have it quite uh, a high percentage. If I'm right, we are now maybe 8%, 8% of the cooperative and also of the projects is uh, equity. I mean, money that people bring in and have to bring in. Okay. Uh, and with maybe more detailed question and people who are members of the cooperative, uh, are they, uh, what is the, let's say the, the, the payment scheme for them? Uh, are they obliged to, are they like, uh, renting, are they buying or they are, uh, participating at, I don't know, annual or monthly level with their financial contribution. Mm -hmm. Very good. Or is, uh, it, or is it, is it, is it from membership or is it also aside from membership? Uh, good question. So in our case, uh, a share of the cooperative to be a cooperative member is, for instance, in our cooperative, it's 500 francs, 500 euros, say. say. In others, it's 2,000 or 3,000 and still others, they have actually no, no fee because only the people that inhabit the cooperative can be members. But here with us, uh, every, almost everybody can get a member. So this is part of the money, but it's not much. I mean, if you see, we are uh, 2,000 members times 500, it's not a big deal. I mean, the new project is almost 90 million francs. So it's not money to do big things. But for every flat, if you rent a flat, you don't buy it, but you also buy a share for your rented flat. And for instance, a flat here with three rooms, you may pay 30,000 francs which is a lot, it's a lot, uh, but it's an interesting system. You get an interest rate on it, which is higher than whenever you have it on your banks. If you're not a speculator, this is good money. You get a good interest rate. And also if you move out, you get these 30,000 francs back. So it's just a temporary uh, investment. And the next person that moves in the flat, has to bring in the 30,000 francs. And for young people, it's also, uh, it's, it's a big amount, but they can ask friends or parents, and then it's also good investment for them. And it's never lost. I mean, the, uh, you don't have 
cooperative they go bankrupt or something mm -hmm. so it's a safe safe investment in that case but you always rent and you buy a share that makes you also a little bit an owner of the whole thing but and is this is this uh, share in inheritable or no no no, no not uh, i think maybe maybe there are cooperatives that have that but i don't know any mm -hmm. it's i mean yeah you can, could imagine but this is really not the system we we want for instance mm -hmm. We want a bit more equal. I mean, equal rights and uh, yeah, yeah. And what is the uh, and one more just to, to close this? What is the process uh, when there is declaration of interest by different cooperative members to be part of, let's say, this this kind of project? How it is decided that? Uh, that you know these 20 or 30 families or individuals will be able to live in this for example this new building is it what is the process before uh, that precedes how it is decided who who will be is it some, some sort of competition or is it more uh, let's say less competitive it is sort of a competition because there will be thousands of people that want an apartment like this also here the existing projects everywhere there are endless lists of people that want to move in and someone has to decide who can move in and meanwhile there are uh, computer programs we don't have that yet <laughs> but that uh, um, are programmed, for instance, to have uh, enough diversity, people with uh, different backgrounds, be it income, be it, uh, I don't know, whatever kind of um, characteristics, like or families, or persons, or um, shared living, like three or four people sharing a, an apartment, like community living or so there are many many of these categories uh, the uh, committee electing the people to live there have to decide with this criteria but they will never be super just we just say we want to be just and uh, there are chances for everybody to get in but at the end, there are just not enough uh, apartments. So it's always a tricky thing. We get uh, cooperatives get attacked a lot. Also the public housing, because yeah, who, who gets uh, a, a apartment like this is a lucky person. We can, it's easy to say that, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, do we have any other questions? Uh, this was more as an interview rather than <laughs> webinar, <laughs> but hopefully uh, at least the presentation will later be a good framework for discussion uh, once it will be uh, uh, record uh, once the recording will be released to to the uh, narrow group of uh, of uh, counselors and activists. Sure. And you anytime yeah. can come back to me if anything is unclear or whether uh, we're also a bit in contact now and then with Iva Marcetic and uh, those yeah. our Serbian friends. And anytime I like to share my knowledge of course yeah thanks a lot and hopefully we uh we will be able to meet again in person yeah. uh if you don't mind you can also share with us uh the powerpoint uh, so that we can maybe compensate a bit uh, with visuals uh, 
sure. the, the technical problems we, we had. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks a lot and uh, have a nice evening. Uh, all maybe the best. Maybe Carol is still there. No, I don't think so. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. Bye, have a great thank time. You. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye-bye. Ciao.